a special day. You know, church has been so weird for the last, oh, how many months has it been, Jolene? Who knows? We lost count. It's, uh, it's just 2020 is here. For those of you online, Jolene is sitting right over here. And uh, we're, we're talking about the craziness of how uh, everything has been in this world. Uh, church, uh, the, the, the difference that um, we've, had to, we've had to do things and trying to you know, be appropriate at the same time, trying to reach people with the love of God and help them become fully devoted followers of Him. And as uh, Ron said, it is a challenge. There's just things that are not normal for us. And things get canceled, things get changed. It's almost uh, weekly. It's not weekly, but sometimes it feels like it. You're wondering, you know, when's the next report going to come out and what's going to happen? And so we're trying to find every way possible to impact our community, impact our valley, and ultimately touch our world and allow the love of Christ to change it. Um, one of the ways we do that is by hearing from other people. We have a dear friend. If you've been with us for any length of time, you remember Dr. Uh, Rodney Frazier. He's an African-American pastor in South Dallas. He's the chaplain of the local police department. He is the chaplain of uh, Dallas Theological Seminary. And he um, is also the uh, a, a professor and a dear friend of ours here at Church on the Ridge. And through the miracle of modern science, uh, through satellite and VHS technology, he's going to be with us this morning. And so I want you to sit back. I want you to prepare your hearts and to receive because God has a message in this Hope for the Holidays series that we're in. So let's welcome Dr. Rodney. Rodney, are you there? Come in, Dr. Rodney. Hey. Well, hello, my dear friends at uh, Church on the Ridge. It's so good to be with you once again and uh, also to be with my uh, dear beloved brother, Charlie Salmon, Dr. Charlie Salmon, and his lovely wife, Sandy, uh, and his entire family. I tell you what, um, I wish I could be with you in person again like I was the first time that uh, I had a chance to share with you guys, but uh, as most of you know, uh, as I declared last time I was there, I am a diehard Dallas Cowboy fan, and I know this is just not our season, so um, I needed to stay here and probably report to AT&T Stadium uh, later uh, on today to help them out against the Cincinnati Bengals because uh, they are having a horrible, horrible season. And so because of that, uh, your dear pastor has shown me grace and uh, loving kindness and, and mercy, and uh, he's allowed me to jump on the Seattle Seahawks uh, bandwagon because I do really adore your team. I really, really do. It's a great team, great coach. Great quarterback, great quarterback. And hopefully next year we'll be in better shape, okay? Well, listen, I want to share some good news with you uh, that's not necessarily about sports, but it's about something of a spiritual significance. And I want to speak to you from the subject of fear not. Christmas will not be canceled. Fear not. Christmas will not be canceled. You know, we've dealt in this pandemic age with so many different types of cancellations all this year that uh, we've all had to look at things much differently and appreciate things a lot uh, differently than what we normally have. Uh, everything, um, if you name it, all of us, we've experienced some sort of cancellation. Uh, major airlines, uh, I know in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Southwest Airlines is located uh, in Dallas and uh, American Airlines is located in Fort Worth. And they made significant changes to their schedule, uh, to their uh, uh, routes where they were going, and they canceled a lot of flights. A lot of things got canceled. A lot of events got canceled. Uh, in our Metroplex, and I'm sure a lot of events got canceled in your particular Metroplex uh, as well. And um, even our school district uh, really had a topsy-turvy uh, school year so far. Uh, everything from them uh, putting back the start of school date 
two or three times in order to find out when was the right time to start school and canceling it and then postponing it to another date. And then the decision to go from face to face learning to virtual learning. There always just seems to be some sort of decision around cancellation. And we're not even going to mention pro sports right now. Football games being canceled because of COVID. Uh, Basketball games were canceled. Major League Baseball was done quite differently this year. We built a multi, uh, we built a a billion dollar uh, stadium for the Texas Rangers. And the Rangers still uh, have not been able to play in it because of the COVID and COVID numbers. So everything has been different. Uh, We've had to get used to watching football with no fans in the stadiums. Uh, And it just doesn't feel the same uh, as it does when the, when the sixth man (laughs) or the 13th man or uh, whatever you're saying is in Seattle is there to just cheer uh, the 12th man to, to cheer on your beloved Seahawks. Well, listen, let me tell you this good news. In spite of all those cancellations, the one thing that I can tell you based upon scripture and the inerrancy of God's word is that Christmas will not be canceled. Not this year, not any year. Turn with me to the Gospel of St. Luke, the second chapter, verses 10 and 11. I just want to look at those you know, two verses and, 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 and just kind of contextually let you know what's going on there. The Gospel of St. Luke, the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, verses 10 and 11, and I'm reading from a very, very easy translation, the New Living Translation. I like it because it's very digestible uh, in terms of understanding scripture. And it says this, but the angel reassured them, who? The shepherds who were watching um, their fields. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. Isn't that great news? He says, I, the angel said, don't be afraid. I bring you great news and great news of joy. The Savior, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. Listen, that verse alone lets us know that the event and the effect of Christmas could never be postponed or canceled by something that's going on in our world today. And you can take joy as a believer in knowing that Christmas is not going to be canceled. I'm going to give you three reasons why Christmas is not going to be canceled this year, nor will it be canceled next year or years to come. The first reason that you need to have joy and you need to take hold of Christmas will not be canceled, my friends, because one, God loves us. God loves us. I know. I I wish I could be all deep in everything. I'm not quite like that uh, because what I'm going to give you is profoundly simplistic, but it's simplistically profound. God loves us. This is what the whole Christmas story is all about. Because when God first created man, he created man in his image to have fellowship with him and to have worship with him and to be in his presence at all times. But we all know that story in the garden where Adam and Eve messed up that event. Sin got in the way. Satan tricked them. And upon tricking them, uh, a great divide was placed between man and between God. And man's been trying to fight his way back 
into that connection with God ever since. And so in the Old Testament, when you go back and you study Old Testament worship, you'll see sacrifices being made. And you'll see animals being brought uh, to the temple for worship and 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 burnt offerings uh, uh, being sent up, uh, all in an attempt for man to come back to God, for man to try to bridge that gap between himself and God. And so finally, the question had to be answered as time kept rolling along and time kept rolling along. Who's going to bridge the gap? How can we eternally bridge this gap between man and God so that the connection can form again, the fellowship can happen again, the relationship can be formed again? How can it happen? Who's going to bridge the gap? Well, uh, in our culture growing up, the old preacher would say he would use his sanctified imagination as he would preach to us as children uh, the story of the Old Testament. And he would say that somebody would say, well, what about Moses? Can Moses bridge the gap? No, Moses can do it because Moses was a murderer, so he couldn't bridge the gap. And they say, well, listen, what about Abraham? Could Abraham, he was a good man, could he bridge the gap? No, he couldn't do it because, you know, he got to a point where he slept with his maidservant and uh, had a baby out of wedlock. In fact, uh, he was, he would be what you would call today a delinquent daddy uh, with what happened with Hagar. And so not only did that happen with him, but then somebody said, well, well, hey, what about Jacob? Well, certainly we can't use Jacob because his name alone means trickster. And we don't need anybody being a trickster that's going to be the gap or that's going to bridge the gap between God and man. And then someone else said, well, I got it. I tell you what, I bet I know. What about David? God said that David was a man after his own heart. And David wrote all of these beautiful psalms and worship psalms unto God. And certainly David could be the one, but no, David couldn't do it either because of the fact that David uh, had a midnight rendezvous one night with Bathsheba. And then after impregnating her, um, instead of just admitting to his fault, he further uh, uh, further plotted to try to cover it up and just made it worse. Um, and so finally, by making it worse, he, he, he told her husband uh, to go back to battle, Uriah. Uriah was so faithful to David that uh, he didn't even go home to be with his wife when David took him off the battle line. So David put him back out in front of the battle lines so that it would be guaranteed that he would be murdered. And then David could look like the good guy and then take in Bathsheba and this baby. So certainly David can't bridge the gap. And so for a while, everyone was lost. Who's going to bridge the gap? Who's going to bridge the gap? And finally, God said, it looks like I'm going to have to uniquely do this myself. And that's where that verse comes into the New Testament, where, you know, Jesus is born of Bethlehem. And he grows up for 33 years. God clothes himself in the body of Jesus. And he comes down here to, to, to save us in the form of Jesus. And then it said in that John, the third chapter, uh, uh, in that 16th verse that we love and that our children love, uh, love to love, loves to quote back to us for God. So loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I want you to get that again, because you can you can say it so many times that it'll lose its intensity for God so loved. He so loved. Don't, 
Don't, don't forget that word so. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's great news. That's joy on today. God loves us for God. That talks about the initiation of God. So love, that talks about the intensity of God. The world, that talks about the inclusiveness of God. That he gave his only, that talks about the individuality of God, his only begotten son. That whosoever believes, that talks about the invitation of God should not perish. That talks about the invisibility of God, but have everlasting life. That talks about the immortality of the love of God. I tell you what, now that's love. That's love, and that's something that you can have joy about. And I tell you what, right about now, in my church back here in Cedar Hill, somebody would, would, would just shout hallelujah just based on the fact of God's love. It's just that great. God loves us. And you've got to communicate that message because even though we've gone through a lot in this pandemic age, it does not excuse us from sharing the good news that Christmas won't be canceled, first of all, because God loves us. Second of all, God is with us. God is with us. He's with us. You know, ever since the beginning of time, uh, God has, you know, this, this whole relationship, he's always revealed himself unto man in a certain way, and especially around some sort of promise. When you look at the relationship between Moses and God, okay, back then, he, he revealed himself to Moses as a promise maker. He said, listen, I'm going to be with you, and you're going to deliver my people out of bondage. He delivers him. He, he reveals himself to Moses as a promise maker, and then later he reveals himself to uh, Abraham as a provider a provider, Abraham, as he uh, took Isaac up that mountain, up to Moriah. And when he took him up there, because he obeyed in his heart, God delivered a ram in the bush when he got up there. And then the angel said, don't touch him. You don't have to kill him now. You've already done it in your heart. You've obeyed in your heart. He revealed himself to Moses as a promise maker, but he revealed himself to Abraham as a provider. And then today he reveals himself to us as a promise keeper. He's a promise keeper, Church on the Ridge. I know it for myself and somebody, you know it for yourself too. He's a promise keeper. He tells us just his name alone God with us. He says, just like I was with Moses, just like I was with Abraham, and just like I was with the others in the Old Testament and New Testament, guess what? I'm going to be with you. The name goes all the way back to the Old Testament because when you look at it, he is El which is God. You know this from Pastor Salmon, but he's Imanu, which is with us. El is God. Imanu is with us. Imanu is with us, and God is El. El is God. God is with us, and yet with us is Imanu. He is Imanu El. He is Imanu El. He is El. God, but he is with us, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, El, Emmanuel, El, Emmanuel, 
Hey, uh, let's do it this way. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. And he shall come and save his people from their sins and be the deliverer of this world because he is the Prince of Peace, the wonderful counselor. Emmanuel, God is with us. Christmas won't be canceled this year. You can depend on that. You can have joy in that. You can sing the praise songs with praises. And, and, and you can shout with joy in the midst of all of this because one, God is with us. God loves us. God is with us. But here's a third reason why Christmas will not be canceled. Fear not. Not only does God love us, not only is God with us, but God is for us. <laughs> God is for us. I don't know about you guys, but I'm about to shout in my home office right now. I tell you what, you know how you all have to excuse me because we haven't had much to shout about down here in Dallas lately. But just knowing this good news <coughs> is giving me something to shout about. God is for us. My favorite verse in the Bible is 1 Peter 5 and 7. And it says uh, that, that he cares so much, so much for us. And it says, cast your cares or throw your cares upon God. Or give all of your cares unto God, for he cares for you. But you don't understand what I'm going through. I'm unemployed in this season. Give all your cares unto God. I've, I've not only lost my job, but I don't really have groceries right now. Give your cares unto God. I've gotten a sick report. I'm not doing too well physically, Pastor Frazier. Last time you were here, uh, I was in pretty good health, but now I'm going through some challenges. Give all your cares unto God, because in spite of it all, he cares for you. He cares for you, and he will fight for you. He loves you just that much. This closing story, and then I'll be through uh, before uh, before I hold you too long on in this worship service. But listen, um, I was watching the news a couple of weeks ago, and it showed a story of, of a retired man who was walking his dog. In fact, I believe it was a, a, a puppy. Uh, wasn't even a full-grown dog walking his dog in Florida near the lake when all of a sudden a baby alligator jumped out of the water and grabbed the dog. When the baby alligator grabbed the dog and, and, and began to clamp down on the dog and wanted to take the dog back into the water so he could devour it, the owner of the dog jumped into the water with the alligator and he began to wrestle and begin to pull that alligator the unique thing about it was he just kept on he kept on he put himself in danger and he just kept on kept on pulling 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 that alligator's mouth open it was just a baby alligator itself it wasn't a, quite an adult it wasn't an adult alligator but it was a baby alligator but it was he was old enough to harm the dog and to, and, and to try to kill the dog. The whole time, the man had a cigar that he was smoking while he was walking his dog. And he, he kept the cigar in his mouth the whole time while he was wrestling with the alligator. He never let go of the cigar. Finally, finally, he, he, he hit the alligator with a blow and the alligator let the dog, let the puppy go. And the puppy started yelping and he, he ran off. And when he ran off, 
And the man was able to throw the alligator back out into the water and then go up on shore and begin to take care of his dog. When they interviewed him and the news media interviewed him, they said, we saw the footage because there were there were cameras there in, in, in the area okay, um, with, with the park rangers or something. But there were cameras that were already there. And they said, we noticed the whole time you never you never did let go of the cigar. You know, how did you do that? You know, you had to be thinking of two things at one time. And he said, I, I wasn't thinking about the cigar. He said, I was thinking about the dog. I was willing to do anything I needed to do to deliver the dog that I love from danger. And it just so happened that I was able to hold a cigar at the same time. But my love transcended all of that and was for the little puppy that was in trouble. Well, listen, we were in trouble a long time ago. And God saw that this world was in the clutches of Satan's jaw. And God said, I need to do something because nobody else can do it. And he came down here through 42 generations and thousands of years ago. And he was born in Bethlehem and his name was Jesus. And that's why when the, when the glory, when the light shone, the shepherds, the angels said to the shepherd, Do, don't you dare be afraid. Don't be afraid. If anything, you need to rejoice because the Savior, the Messiah has come to save us. He's here. He's finally here. So my friends, I can't predict about the vaccine. I can't predict about the pandemic numbers. I can't predict a whole lot of things. But one thing I can tell you that you can be sure of on today, fear not, have joy. When you sing that Christmas hymn, joy to the world, sing it with joy. Because the Savior has come. And the thing that you can count on is that Christmas will not be canceled. Not this year or not any other year. Why? Because God loves us. God is with us. And God is for us. Take that with you on this week and consider that as you walk with joy. And share that same message with somebody who's losing hope on today. Thank you. Will you bow your head with me? Father, we thank you that you had a plan the whole time. And we thank you that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And we thank you that not only was he born in Bethlehem, but he died on Calvary. Father, we realize those of us who have walked with you for some time now, that if it was no Christmas, there would be no Easter. No Easter, no hope. No hope, no reason to live. But we can live with joyfulness on today because he lived. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because we know who holds the future. And life, even in this pandemic age, is worth the living just because he lives. Remind us of that and let us take that with joy to this world. In Jesus' name we pray and by your spirit. Amen and thank God. See you next time, Church on the Ridge. God bless you. I love you, family. Bye-bye now.